Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be continuing my 13 days of Halloween series with Birth Rebirth. This movie is directed by Laura Moss, starring Marin Ireland and Judy Reyes. But because this is a little known movie, not a lot of people have heard of this. I want to do a non-spoiler review first for it and then I'll get into spoilers later on in the video because I do think that you should seek this movie out and rent it on whatever platform you like to rent movies from because I do think this is worth a watch. So let's just get right into the movie. This movie follows a morgue technician that is essentially a mad scientist who is able to reanimate people from the dead so she steals a dead little girl from the morgue brings her home reanimates her back to life and when the little girl's mother finds out she also gets involved and in order to keep this girl alive they unfortunately have to harvest these biological materials from pregnant women that kind of lead these two characters on a dark spiraling path into madness now i absolutely love this premise it really is a modern take on a frankenstein story and i can say that in the non-spoiler section and you would still not entirely know what you're getting into with this film because this movie is not just you know that Frankenstein like movie this movie is actually a lot more deep than that and it kind of goes in a different direction you know than that premise would suggest you know it's not like a pet cemetery or like a Frankenstein like story where it would go in the direction that you'd expect a story like this to go down no it's more of a dark drama with a lot of dark comedy in it as well which I really wasn't expecting I do think the performances and these characters and how they slowly go down this dark path was easily the most engaging part of this film Marin Ireland plays Rose in this movie who is the more technician the mad scientist essentially she is playing the Frankenstein like character where the little girl is Frankenstein's monster and I absolutely loved her in this role and you've probably seen this actress in many other things just scattered throughout you know all of these different TV and films like in her filmography which you know I thought I recognized her when I saw her on screen I couldn't put my thumb on it and I think I recognized her from Hell or High Water or The Empty Man she's also in so many other things I'm sure you've seen at least one project that she's been in but I loved her in this role because she's playing this really socially awkward and nervous and just this character that is very much a specific quirk of a character that feels very unique to this performance and this performance alone. I think she gives a lot to this character without saying much for the first half of this movie. And when you finally get into this character and you kind of dive into the morality that she is struggling with throughout the entire film, she becomes more engaging and more interesting. And when she interacts with the other character in this movie, the mom of the little girl, I found their dynamic to be really interesting. And again, there's some dark comedy in this film with them doing the things that they do that are pretty messed up, but it's played in this like almost tongue in cheek type of way where they're kind of aware of the terrible things that they're doing and they're saying these lines in a very dry manner and it was just it was really funny for some reason maybe I'm crazy for thinking that this movie had some comedy in it but I really found that this character was really funny in a very dark and odd and quirky way do you have a pull up I have a futon Judy Reyes plays the little girl's mother in this movie and she pretty much plays the type of role that you'd expect this character to play which is a character that is absolutely desperate to get her little girl back and would do literally anything in order to get her back and this really also dives into the morality of this ability to be able to play God essentially and to reanimate the dead and to bring somebody back what does it cost this character in terms of what they have to sacrifice both morally and what they have to sacrifice physically in order to get what she desires and I found her performance very engaging in this film as well as this mother that's you know had this subtlety to her character where yes you know she was very distraught and you know not like the outwardly like crying type of character like in Hereditary with with Tony Collette when when she lost her daughter in that film but she was more so quiet and reserved and traumatizing and feel this pain deep inside of her that she didn't want to truly let out she was kind of holding it all in and when she found out that there's this ability to possibly bring her daughter back she's going to fully dive into that and again it's more of a, a less spoken thing than you'd normally see in like an outwardly like large and big performance she's very subtle in her performance and I found it also extremely engaging but really in general I think Laura Moss does a great job at directing this film because it does have this tone and atmosphere that's kind of felt more character based and more thematic than anything else to be a very interesting choice and I found that her direction in general with the disturbing sequences were extremely disturbing her direction when it comes to the the friendship and the relationships and the characters in this movie was really intimate and funny and also dark in its own sort of ways and so I thought she did a great job as a director here and I'm very curious to see what she does next and just looking at her filmography it looks like she's done a lot of short films and a lot of production design actually as her main credits on on IMDb which I also find fascinating to see a, a person who's working in the film industry in one aspect kind of veering off into a nude aspect you know being the director of a film and fully having her vision be displayed on the screen and that's always exciting for me to see a new upcoming filmmaker you know dive into a movie like this and really just nail it right out of the park and there are some drawbacks in this film that I'll get more into in the spoiler section of this video but for what I'll say here for anybody who hasn't seen the film 
film notes. I do think this film leaves you off in a point where there is more to be desired from a story standpoint. I didn't think the movie was going to end when it ended. I thought there was more runtime to be had for this movie to live with these characters a little bit longer to see what happens next. I see from a character standpoint and from like their arcs, they have kind of reached a conclusion, but it feels like there was more story to be had and I really wanted to see more. I could have easily done 20 more minutes in this film or maybe even speed up the pace to get to the point where they get to at the end of this movie and have you know a little bit more time to live with the decisions that are made by the end of it and the movie just kind of ends off in a place where it left me wanting more and so I think that is my main criticism for this film is that I want more and I don't think that's necessarily a terrible thing to have in a movie you know you want to leave the audience wanting more in some sort of ways but not too much to a point where you feel empty by the ending of the film and I think this movie is kind of on the fence between those two things where I can easily see somebody falling on the side that it just makes you feel empty by the end of it but I do think the arcs and the conclusion of this film left a narrative success for me at least as an audience member that made me enjoy this movie but this is where I'm going to get into some spoilers for this movie so if you've not seen Birth Rebirth I think you can click off now if you want to go see the movie after my review definitely go check it out and then come back here and let's get into these spoilers because I want to talk about some of the details and some of the sequences in this movie that really did disturb me in all of the best ways and I think the opening sequence really the first act of this film does a great job at unsettling you right off the bat and honestly ever since House of the Dragon I've been really traumatized from any birth scenes in any movie. The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon also had a sequence that was really unsettling to me in that show and of course you know House of the Dragon has been doing that for like every single episode in that show which was just deeply disturbing. This movie starts off with a woman giving birth. You don't know exactly who this woman is and she's you know struggling. You can tell that the baby is also having some trouble and she's worried about the baby. She's also worried about herself to see if she's even going to make it out of this pregnancy and it cuts to black and then it cuts to our main you know mother and her daughter living their life and you know the mother goes off to work and leaves her daughter with this other neighbor of hers to take care of her and she falls ill and this little girl dies and it's just this, this string of events is just really traumatizing because for one you're left hanging not knowing exactly what happened to that mother and this child you don't know if it's this mother and child that you're now following in this film so you don't know if they've been through all this trauma all this you know heartache at this point in their lives so far and so now to deal with the death of a very young girl a young child and to see the mother's reaction which like I said she plays it very subtle and very like buried down and the trauma within this event was really impactful for me and so I think the first 30 minutes of this movie was really great in order to set the tone of it but like I said when you get Marin Ireland's introduction into her role in this film and her you know coming into contact with the mother and getting into all the weird intricacies of how she's actually bringing this kid back to life it gets really weird there's also this pig that she's able to reanimate at first before she went on to experiment with actual people and she has this backstory with her mother dying and you know this backstory with you know this starfish that she cut off the leg of and then it eventually grew back and this kind of gave her the obsession of you know reanimating of th of people fixing themselves to be what they're meant to be and I think that this character has a very strong god complex in terms of like you know as a as a woman she's able to give birth to life but she doesn't want to do it in the conventional way she wants to do it in a way that will actually save somebody in a way that she wasn't able to save her mom in this very strange and very dark and twisted way because she did experiment on her mom after she died she did experiment on all these corpses that came into the morgue and she has this very dark twisted sense of I guess morality that she has because she takes this young girl who comes into her morgue has the right type of blood type and right type of I guess all the biological aspects that matches her own body that she can give you know her her fetuses to which is also a very disturbing aspect of this character but is also a way for her to give life to somebody else and so that's the trade-off in this movie that this movie has kind of the moral conundrum of is you can give life back to somebody who has passed away but you have to kind of give somebody else's life in order to breed that other life and it's it's just such an interesting concept to think about and to say would you sacrifice those sort of things in order to bring back a loved one and what's also interesting is that this character does not want to take this little girl to save her for you know the mother she doesn't know her at all she's just taking this body and if things didn't go well or if the mother didn't find her and find out what she was doing like what moral lines would she have crossed without the mother being there at every step of the way to try to help her throughout this process and the way that the mother goes from you know trying to grieve in her 
her own way, being shut off from the world to kind of being happy again that her daughter is alive and making this friendship and also snapping at her when she's not trying to help this little girl and when the little girl stops receiving the medication and the, I guess, serum that she needs to keep her animated once she died, you're also introduced to this other pregnant woman that they're also kind of drawing, you know, the, the biological materials that they need from this pregnant woman because she also matches biologically with the little girl and so she, you know, kind of manipulates this mother that's, that's dealing with this pregnancy that has her own trauma with, you know, trying to, you know, conceive for so very long and then she goes to her home, poisons her and then brings her back in order to just get the biological material that she needs and ends up killing this woman that was pregnant that you found some sort of, I guess, connection with because she's been struggling to conceive for very long. And so there's a lot of disturbing aspects of this movie from the very beginning to the very end and that woman that was pregnant that died at the beginning of this movie was the woman that's, you know, was poisoned by our main character in this film and it just kind of loops back in a very tragic way. Like I said, there was a lot of dark comedy in the second act of this film with a lot of just really great dry line deliveries from the performances but still it just left you on such an unsettling note by the end of it because of the the dark turn that both of these characters went down the morality that they sacrificed their own I guess souls in order to bring back this little girl who was clearly not okay you know she couldn't speak clearly she was mumbling she even killed the pig that was introduced into this movie the pig that did absolutely nothing wrong but the pig that was also messed up because it was reanimated in this sort of way and like I said if this movie went down the pet cemetery like Frankenstein sort away i think this little creepy girl would have gone around killing all these characters as a way to like oh this is your punishment before trying to play god your creation is now going to backfire on you and that's the direction that i thought this movie was going to go in and if it did go in the, that direction i think it would have played a little bit more in terms of the horror aspect of this movie but the fact that it didn't kind of made it a little bit more original and so that is the part where i feel like left me a little bit open-ended because by the ending of this film you know they they kill this other pregnant lady in order to save this little girl to reanimate her one more time and you see her she wakes up and the mother says oh we brought you back again and she's very happy that she did this but she also sacrificed this innocent pregnant woman that had nothing to do with the situation whatsoever in order to get her daughter back and then it cuts to black. And so like I said, the character arcs are over. These characters have sold themselves essentially to save this little girl to advance their scientific, you know, experiment to a point where their morality is just completely out of the window by the ending of this film. But when you have a scene with this little girl killing a pig in the middle point of the movie and you think that this girl's violence is going to play a role later on in this film, it's like Chekhov's gun. If you set up a gun in a film, by the third act of the film, the gun needs to go off in some sort of meaningful way. And so you have this little girl kill this pig, show an act of violence, but they don't utilize this girl to show an act of violence to the world to show that, you know, these characters are genuinely making a mistake in reanimating this little Little girl and I know that wasn't the point of the movie because of the character dynamics and the the I guess the the moral question that this movie is, is presenting to the audience that is answered in this film in some sort of way but that one aspect of it didn't leave me feeling a little bit empty by the ending of the film and again I think that the conventional route that this film could have gone could have made a really scary movie I think talk to me does a great job at being a very original and inventive movie while also drawing from other films while kind of being original but also very you know conventional in some sort of ways but just really standing out because it does it so extremely well and I think this this movie had the performances, the themes, and the the tone and the original feel and the original style that this movie has that would make a more conventional story also still work. And so I'm a little conflicted by the ending of this film, but in general, the ride was just such a really intriguing road to go down. But those are going to be my thoughts on Birth Rebirth, and I'm very curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below, whether you're in the camp that hasn't seen the movie yet, and whether you are going to watch this movie because of this review, or if you have seen the movie and you're very conflicted about the ending like I am, or you loved it, or you hated it, I'm very curious to have the conversation continue in the comment section down below. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more reviews in my 13 days of how Halloween series. I got a lot more videos for the rest of October to do in this series that I'm very excited to get to, but you can also check my VHS 85 review or my Walking Dead Daryl Dixon review or my Exorcist Believer review. I'm going to have a breakdown of the Exorcist original trilogy that I cannot wait to finish up. It's like a full video essay on all three of those films that I'm very excited to get out to you guys. So like I said, comment down below, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel to see more reviews just like this one, and I hope to see you all in my next one. Mm -hmm.